Hello, welcome back to our MON tutorial part two. I'm Michael, the chief developer of EnvyMed. So in this tutorial, we will know how we have access to the OpenStreetMap database in um, MONT, which is a very huge data set of all kinds of geographical information on, on a vector-based area. So that's quite an um, interesting source of information, especially if we work on an area where we don't have any other information like plans or um, other, di other digital data. So the first thing um, we must do is um, that we go back to our uh, map and for the moment in the last tutorial we have just worked with the map and we have seen that it is a metric map that means the coordinates are in meters but it was not georeferenced so this is why in the bottom of the screen it says map is a generic uh, metric system and it has no georeference so what does it actually mean has no georeference a georeference this is just saying the system where on the earth is the whole map located where we are working with. So the most easy georeference system is um, the system we all know. This is all the geographic coordinates or VGS84 coordinates, simply longitude and latitude. So any location on Earth you can represent or you can localize with giving its coordinates in longitude and latitude. And if information is fine enough with minutes and seconds even um, of degrees you can exactly locate a point. The only problem with um, the geographic coordinates is that it is based on a spherical coordinate system because it practically represents the earth. And on the other side our map or any map or any CID system, any GIS system um, works on a plane map. So that means we have no spherical but a simple Euclidean coordinate system. So we must transfer the geographic coordinates into a projected coordinate system which is defined in a flat terrain, on a flat plane. There are quite a lot of different um, ways to do that and there are, any country on the earth basically has its own geographical reference system. So we have decided in MONT that we use the UTM system because this is a worldwide valid system and it's a metric system, it's based on an ambition um, projection and it works very well. So anything in Envimet Mont will work in a georeference map will be referred to UTM coordinates. So let's say we want to make an analysis of New York City on Central Park area. So the first thing we have to do is so we go to our map. So zoom out that we see some items and we go to world setup. And we can go to find location using the internet to find the information about the georeference and the time zones of the location we want to go. So we actually have two, two search options. The first is geonames and the second one is Google. Google is good if you have concrete street names. Geonames is more good if you have landscape names or more trivial names. So for the moment I think Google will do the best work here and we type in the location so we say Central Park in New York City and then press search so here we are we got a result search Central Park New York City and if we're not sure if this is the correct location because maybe we have several um, search results we can just click on that and we see the information longitude latitude and the time zone and this looks pretty good so that seems to be our central park so we say select location and now you see everything has automatically be filled in the name of the location the longitude and the latitude and the time zone we will need that for creating the environment model later on and also we have the um, corresponding utm coordinate system so it's um, located in the utm zone 18 and these are the easting and the northing coordinates in metric coordinates. So one thing I would like to change and make a map a bit smaller because it's a 2000 by 2000 meters. That's pretty enough for um, our test. We say um, create anti project map. So then here we are with a map located in New York Central Park. Um, if you look down at the screen, you see now it's saying that it is in our UTM zone 18 and 
Also, you see the corresponding longitude and latitude coordinates when you move with the mouse, but those are just for, for information. So, um, MONT will automatically convert the information from longitude, latitude to UTM, and if required, from UTM to longitude and latitude. So, now we are prepared and we can try to get information from the OpenStreetMap. So there are basically two, two buttons to um, connect to OpenStreetMap. The one is the import OpenStreetMap button. So you have the option to um, download OSM files from OpenStreetMap so that you can access them um, offline because sometimes um, the data from OSM can be very large. But the more simple um, option is the one we're using here is get OSM. So as soon as we do have a georeferenced map, um, we can just press the button and you get an online request to the OpenStreetMap server, actually to the, to the Overpass server, and um, download the data, which takes some time. So um, it getting the polygons, it interprets the OpenStreetMap data, because we will see that the OpenStreetMap data are pretty different in the way they are structured, in the way they are organized to uh, the concept of layers. So here we are. You see all the um, OpenStreetMap data drawn as points, lines, and polygons um, as a grayscale map. So for, for us, from the human impression, that already looks like a map. But unfortunately for the, the computer, um, it's not really a structured map. Because anything is just a polygon, a line, or um, a, a point. So. Um, so let's talk about the concept of OpenStreetMap because we have to understand the concept of OpenStreetMap a bit to um, know how we can actually get data from the OpenStreetMap into our layer-based system of MOND and then later on into the um, EnviMap model. The first thing is that any object, is it a polygon, line, or um, point, it doesn't matter, has a set of attributes or set of tags, it's just called actually in OpenStreetMap. And as OpenStreetMap is a community-based um, project, anybody can assign tags to the polygons, to the lines, and so on. So that means there is no standard. There are some standards which are typical tags. For example, the typical tag for a building is building. So if you want to indicate that a polygon is a building, you, of course, add this tag building. But you are completely free to um, add tags which are in your mind. So you can also add a tag a nice looking building. So if you think this is the relevant thing for the community and tag on the buildings or a polygon with a nice looking building. So as there are no standards, we have a bit um, of a mess in the data structure. And the tr we try to organize this map with using this import dialog, which is um, not in the final version. So we will work on this dialog, but for the moment, it's a good concept to understand the way. So the first thing is, from all the polygons we have here, so we say, select points, lines, or polygons, because these are the basic concept of OpenStreetMap data. So let's say we are interested in the buildings because this is basically what we are going to extract now in our demonstration. So here we have a list of all tags of all objects which are in our snapshot from the OpenStreetMap data. And you see there are a lot of tags and they are ordered by the usage frequency. So the tag number one, which is used most frequently, is height. Then the second frequently used tag is building. And when we walk down the list, you see it's going to be very few times that it is used. For example, here somebody added the architect of a building that has been done four times in all the polygons. There are actually 3,068 polygons, um, which are buildings, and only four of them have um, a tech architect, and so on and so on. So um, if we select, for example, the tech building, all elements or polygons in this case which queries the tag building are selected and this is our first step in our filter to select these elements 
So there is a second step of filter if we like. So we can see in this second box here from all elements that carry the tag building, which tags do they carry as well? So they have uh, the tag yes, which is actually not a tag because it's just written building yes. You see, um, it's sometimes very ambitious how these tags are used. Or for example, building equals school equals church. So if we say we do not accept all tag values, but we only accept um, those objects which carry on the tag building plus the tag school, uh, sorry, plus the tag church, you see only a few objects will remain, which are actually on um, the churches. Or if we want churches and schools, we can say, okay, select those buildings or those polygons that carry the tag building plus carry the information school and church. So for now we say we accept all tag values, that means all the polygons that carry a building tag will be considered now as objects we want to have in our building layer. And finally, um, we have to construct an attribute table because we need the height or we need some more information if we get it. And here is a list of all other attributes that can be found in all these objects here. You see it's quite an impressive list again. We can go down and it's a quite specific things like if you can eat gluten-free there or um, how many um, seatings it has in the outer options and so on and so on. But there are of course also some tags which are interesting for us, for example the levels, because we want to, we need to have some height information. Actually um, this filter now says this attribute is not in the map, that means um, all these objects do not carry a level tag. Um, we also want the height of the building. We want to have the name of the building. If we like, we can also ch uh, check here building levels, which is probably the same like on the levels attribute here. So you see there are quite a number of informations which are can be stored in, in different ways. So we can check this and then say, okay, we test the setting. So now actually a new test layer has been constructed. And we can, for example, check the objects in this layer. So say, for example, this one here, and you see, now this object carries the attributes I have just selected here. Levels, which is empty, height, name, and building levels. And if I would add some more, they would have some more increasing um, attributes in the object. Okay. Um, if I'm not happy with this setting, I can remove it, but for the moment I will keep it as it is. And I will also say do not remove my test layers and also do not remove the raw OpenStreetMap geometry. So these are the gray lines, points and polygons, which do not help me in constructing an environment model, but it's a good help for orientation here. I say finish, finalizing the import, and here we are. So let's have a closer look at the data we have just generated. So the most important information when we want to create an environment model beside the footprint of the building is of course the height of the building. So if we want to check how many of these objects actually do have a height attribute. So this is no, um, there is no need, no must to have all the attributes in any object. So we can go to the display style like we have seen in the first tutorial and change the full sky from um, a full color um, with the same color for every object to color by value and then select the, the height attribute say OK. Then we do have um, a good idea on of how many of these buildings to actually carry a height tag. This is a very good um, filling with data because if you go to other areas even in New York um, you will have much less information about the building heights. Still there are some buildings that do not carry a height information. So we all have of course to take care of these buildings because this will be a problem later on in the Envimet expert. But for the moment we keep it as it is. Um, we're happy with it because of the height information is good. This information doesn't have a height information as well as the American Museum. We can, of course, um, edit this layer. So if I knew, okay, 
the height of the information, the height information of the American History Museum is, I don't know, 20 meters. I can say apply, finish layer, and fill in on the missing height information. So let's generate an NVMED model layer out of that. First thing we need to do is again to have at least one sub area because otherwise the MONT system would not know which area it should actually transform into a model. So we can just quickly edit in a sub area and this area should fill or at least complete map. Give it a name. Central Park. Add element. So now that we do have a sub area, we can create or we can export um, a modeling layer. So actually the sub area is not required to generate a modeling layer, but in this case I first create the sub area. So we know this um, dialog and the kind of modeling layer type we want to create is of course buildings. And then again we have the list of different properties we do have on the modeling layer and we have to fill them with information as long as we do have the information. So start with the building top information. Of course this is what I have just created in my um, OpenStreetMap um, export. So I have the field levels, uh, the field height, and it's in hopefully in metric coordinates. We always have to check this because sometimes it's in foot or some other unit. Um, so say we use that one. We do not have information about the bottom of the building, so we just use a fixed value, let's say it is zero. And we do have a building name in some parts, so it doesn't it's not really um, make sense for the NVMED, but we can use it because we do have it. So say name and apply. And here we are, and can say export to layer. Here we are, here is our new modeling layer. So now we do have a modeling layer, we do have um a sub area. Of course, we are lacking all the other informations like vegetation, surfaces, and so on. But for the moment, we just look at the, at the buildings. So we go to Analyze and create NVMED model. So you see all the information um, of the georeference map is already here. Central Park, um, Longitude, Latitude. So all these data required by spaces in NVMED is already available. We can select the um, area Central Park, which is two kilometers by two kilometers and say a horizontal resolution of four meters. Let's do a big model, but we, for the moment we'll keep it as it is. And uh, we can change the vertical resolution in spaces later on and import the OpenStreetMap buildings. So here we go. So here we are. Here's our model. We can say save to INX file. So New York City. Here we are. If you look at the output from the reading, you see there are some error messages because there are still, still some buildings in our model which do not carry a, def a height, so the tag height is a zero. Um, we will later on have a, in, in an upcoming version of month, we will replace this case with a standard value, but for the moment, a building of zero height will be not present in the map. And if we close on the map, and turn off the layer for a moment here. So here we are. Of course, you were able to f figure out which are the buildings that actually do not have uh, a height information. But also, um, there is a clue on um, the buildings are flagged. So this is these are flagged buildings here, which are in the purple color. So all these flagged buildings, these with the purple colors, these are the buildings that actually lack a building height. So that makes it easier to, to repair your model by hand. So we are finished with that and we can just quickly move over to spaces and open the file we have just created. Yeah, here we are. Here is our little model of New York City. 
ready to be reproduced in Envimat. And you also see, for example, if we select the building here, the American Museum, all the information should be there, building geometry, move over here. So welcome back to our MUND system. We will see in the next tutorial how we can access, for example, topography data out of that, and in an even more later tutorial, how we can import given shape files, except for example, from a given community um, database set into our NVMAT model. Thanks for watching.